When it comes to troubleshooting the E60 error code, the biggest thing we want to know as a technician is if we're getting that error code on one control panel only, or if we're getting that error code on all the control panels on the displays. The reason for that is because that's going to determine the troubleshooting path that we take when it comes to troubleshooting the E60 error code. So let's talk a little bit about troubleshooting the E60 when it comes to having that error code on one control panel only. This is very simple when it comes to troubleshooting this because it can really only be one of three different items. The first item being the control board, the second item being our communication cable that communicates from the control down to our AIF board, and then last is gonna be our AIF board. Now, it's very rare circumstances that we actually find the AIF board to be faulty, but it is something that we don't want to rule out. So when it comes to troubleshooting that E60 error code on one control panel only, we want to start by taking and swapping our control with the VAT right next to it. But before we do that, we want to make sure that we turn our main power switch off so that we don't run the chance of damaging any of the sensitive electronics when it comes to our control board or our AIF board. When we're unplugging and plugging those connectors in, we run the risk of damaging those boards. So we always wanna make sure that we have that unit powered completely down before we swap any of those components with unplugging or plugging in. So after we've swapped our control panel over to this other side, we can go ahead and power the unit back up and see if that problem followed that control panel. If it did, then we know we're gonna have a faulty control panel. Now, if that problem stayed over here, even after we swap the control boards, then we know we have a potential issue with the communication cable or the AIF board. So when it comes to troubleshooting the communication cable, we have one of two options. We can come right up here to the back of our control board for our communication cable right here, and we can unplug this cable at the back of the control and swap it with the unit right next to it, or we can come down to the AIF board, which is gonna be right here on the side of our fryer behind the side panel. So you can see here, our communication cables are right here at the top. We could take and swap them right here at our AIF board, or we could take and swap them at our control panel like we had just talked about. After we've seen if the problem follows either the communication or the control board, then that's when we're gonna know that our last component involved is gonna be our AIF board. So if that problem followed that, then we know we're gonna have a faulty AIF board. So now let's talk a little bit about if we have the E60 error code on all the control panels at the same time. That's gonna be a different troubleshooting method because what's happening there is basically the AIF board is not receiving any power most likely. Now there's a few different components that control that. There's one being a one amp fuse for gas units, domestic, and then for electric units, for 208 volt and high voltage, uh, you could run into a one and a half amp fuse. So be sure to check the fuse stamping on the fuse itself if you find one of those blown and have to replace it. The other component is gonna be our transformer that powers up the AIF board for the supply voltage. And for gas units, that's gonna be right here behind control panel number one and two, right there. And then if we come down to the side of our fryer, we can see the one amp fuse and also our AIF board. So right here on our gas Evolution Elite model, we're gonna have our one amp fuse right here and you'll have a cap here on the bottom side that would give you access to that fuse. So the one amp fuse here actually protects our AIF board through the line voltage that's supplied to it. So if we find a one amp fuse that's blown inside this fuse holder, what has most likely caused that to blow is the, the ATO pump or commonly known as the jib pump. Now what happens is that jib pump or ATO pump for whatever reason has over amped and caused this fuse to blow. So if we find a situation that we're running into where we're getting E60s and the problem was this fuse blown, be sure to check your ATO or your jib pump. Now this fuse protects the AIF board coming into our P12 connector, which is our line voltage input connector. So if we see this LED light on the board not lit up, then there's a good chance we don't have our line voltage coming into our board here. 
Then we can go ahead and check our transformer plug right here and make sure that we have our 18 volts AC on our two red wires coming into the board. That's gonna power up our AIF board and give it the power it's looking for. So when it comes to troubleshooting the E60 error code on all the control panels at the same time, you can see that the AIF board getting its voltage is critical to that error code. And if it's not getting the voltage that it needs, then it generates that E60 error code on all the VATs instead of one. So the components involved with that that we talked about were gonna be the fuse, also, we have that AIF board transformer that's involved as well. And then last, we talked about possibly the AIF board. We could have our voltage present, but the AIF board might be faulty for whatever reason, and we're getting that error code. Very rare circumstances that that's gonna happen, but we can't rule it out. And remember, a quick visual that is nice and handy for the AIF board to know whether we have our voltage present is the little LED light indicator on the board itself. So we showed you where those components were located on our gas units, but now we're gonna show you real quick where they're located on an electric unit. So you can see behind control panel number two, we have our AIF board right here. And then over here to the side of it, we have our AIF board transformer. And then if we scoot over just a little bit more, then we can see our fuse down here in the bottom right next to our heat contactor. And the way we would gain access to changing that fuse is to actually open up our doors up front and then go up underneath there and we can see the fuse right here with a little small gray cap. So just remember the location of the AIF board and also that one or one and a half amp fuse is gonna be slightly different for the gas models compared to the electric models. So now we have the two different troubleshooting methods to take when it comes to troubleshooting the E60 error code.